Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Me and today, we're doing something that we've been waiting to do all year. We're, I know we've done this in a past video, but we're out here shooting our bows again. Got the crossbow out for Liam and I got my bow in here, uh, right in here, got my arrows out. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a video today, kind of going over some bow tips uh, for shooting. And I'm gonna be kind of teaching Liam a little bit more about shooting his crossbow. Uh, Cause like I said, tomorrow is the opening day of deer season. Unfortunately, I have to work. So I won't get to, <laughs> I won't get to go I won't get to go hunting until probably next Thursday and Friday, which is about a week from now. So uh, it is actually Saturday the 30th and starts, bow season starts October 1st in Oklahoma. So darn it, but it happens every year. But uh, we're gonna get set up and we will catch you back when we're getting ready to shoot some. All right, we're getting Liam set up here. Remember what he's doing right now, the bow is actually a little bit heavy for him. So we have him sitting on the ground uh, he's got it propped up on his knees and stuff like that. Make sure you keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. It's on safe. We're sitting here at 30 yards. Target is way down there. Uh, we decided to practice today at 30 yards rather than 20 because we kind of checked our deer blind and everything. And the, uh, the uh, deer blind and from our deer feet and stuff, we're thinking we're going to be shooting anywhere from 25 to 35 yards. So I got him set up to shoot 30 yards today. Um, so he's fixing to take his first shot here. First thing he's shooting the wicked Ridge. Uh, we got some new bolts for it and everything. So make sure you take it off safe finger off the trigger. Oh, yeah. Yep. Flip that forward. Make sure you, and you're using the second line. Remember the middle one kind of, it, well, it's the second line from the top in the middle. Put that crosshair right on the target and squeeze the trigger just like you're shooting a gun. Good shot. I heard it hit the target, thank God. Didn't hit anybody in behind it. It wouldn't anyway, there's a, a hill there, so we're good. Safety first. <laughs> but, how'd it feel? Nervous. How'd it feel? Uh, well, you know, it's kind of a good boop boop. You know, it felt great. It felt great, all right, that's all I got to say. Paradise PD piece of you know what. All right, let's go down here. Walk you down here and show you where he shot. Don't pull it out just yet. Sorry guys, I'm fat. That's actually a good shot. Really good shot. Dang good shot. Literally quarter of an inch off the center. That's still a kill shot. Hey, maybe I'm just special. Special Ed, maybe. No. Oh yeah, and we have Cannon here today too. I had, to, I had to jump out the truck and I fell. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll go ahead. And... Kids. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get him set up again. We have some more shooting going on. Stay tuned, guys. All right, we're getting set up here again, guys. So. If you saw Liam put that shot probably within half an inch of the bullseye, which is a pretty good shot. He got himself propped up on his arm here. So what we're gonna do, I have four bolts for him. We're gonna have him shoot four bolts before we check it and see if he can keep a pretty tight group because you want these grouped pretty well. So So getting him set, got that bolt ready. It's on safe. You gotta take it off safe in order to shoot it. There you go, and that's carefully squeeze the trigger when you're ready to shoot. No. Okay, put it on safe. All right, guys, sorry, a little bit of malfunction. It was stuck in dry fire mode, so. All right, we're gonna make sure he can hit the target a couple times. Let's go. You gotta switch it off safe. Squeeze that trigger. All right, guys. Liam is done shooting. He has thrown darts. Today did pretty good. So now it's my turn. I got my Matthews V3X 33-inch bow out. Uh, 
I don't know if I really went into detail much on this in my first video. Uh, like I said, this is a Matthews V3X. Uh, bought it last year, pretty penny. But uh, I also have the CBE single pin sight, which means it only has one single pin and it has an adjustable uh, range on there. So like if you, some people like that, some people don't. I'm, this is only my second year shooting with it and I didn't shoot a deer with it last year. Um, so I'm kind of getting used to it myself. Um, the thing about it is, is some people like it, some people don't. Uh, the There's pros and cons to having a single pin sight. The single pin sight is kind of cool. Like you only have to like, you only have to aim at one pin rather than multiple pins. Uh, some people like the single pin. I kind of like it, especially for target shooting. And you know, cause if I'm shooting, uh, like all I got to do is dial it to 30, 40, 50 yards or whatever I'm shooting at and, you know, aim at that one pin. It adjusts up and down, uh, with that little knob like I had now, um, uh, the three, four, five, six pin sights, uh, you shoot those have like your top pin will be 20 yards and, uh, then you have like 30, 40, 50, 60, you know, stuff like that. I can see pros and cons to both. Like I said, uh, if you have a multiple pin sight, I can see the pro for that being that you don't have to make an adjustment. Like if I see a big buck coming in and it's at 40 yards and I've got my thing set at 20 yards, I have to quietly move my sight and dial it to 40 yards rather than just picking up my bow and adjusting my bow height, you know, tilting my sight back a little bit already to my 40 yard pin. So, I mean, that's the one pro of having a multiple pin sight rather than a single pin. Um, but I mean, I kind of like only having to aim at one pin. So, I mean, this year I'm really going to be testing it out. Like I said, hopefully I'll take a couple deer and see how uh, last year I did take a shot at a couple deer that were like at 40 yards. And of course I start out with it sitting on 25 to 30 yards. So I had to really, I, I found, uh, I really had to be really quiet and, you know, methodical with my movements to dial my sight to 40 yards to take that shot. Now, the one drawback to that is like you move more. So, I mean, there's whenever you're out there in the deer blind or in a tree stand, you know, you don't want to move you more than you need. So, I mean, you kind of want to wait for them to come into that certain range. Like I said, that's the one good thing about having a multi-pin sight is you don't have to adjust it. You know, you just have to make sure your pins and everything are on before the season. So, I mean, whenever you go out there, you can just, you know, hey, you pull up your bow and they're at 40 yards. Okay. I just, you know, aim at two pins below the 20 yard pin. So, I mean, you know, I don't really see too many drawbacks of a single pin sight except for that one. Um, I have been target shooting with it for two years, but I've only taken it hunting one time last, you know, a couple times last year uh, when I got my bow. I got my bow late in the season last year. Did a lot of target shooting with it up to 65, 70 yards. And I was, you know, throwing darts, you know, groupings of less than an inch. So, I mean, I love the single pin sight, but I guess for hunting uh, situation, uh, I don't know if it's like the best choice, but I'm really gonna put that to the test this year. If I don't like that sight, CB also makes that multiple pin sight, three or four pin sights. I really don't like shooting over like 50 yards would probably be my max. Uh, because once you get over like 50 yards, then every little thing, it's kind of like shooting a gun past 300 yards. After three, 400 yards, that's when you have to take into accommodation so many different factors, you know, wind. I mean, even a 20 yard shot, the wind, if it's blowing real hard, can throw your arrow off. But uh, usually that's your comfort zone's 20 to 50 yards, usually with a flagship bow like this. So I've seen some people shoot 70, 80 yards with these bows and kill deer, but I don't think I would. Uh, I, I did try that one time last year. Uh, I, I There was a deer that was literally, my, my sight goes to 85 yards you can dial it up to 85 yards. <laughs> I know. And the, there was a couple deer that we were walking back to the truck late uh, one evening and I saw 
two does sitting and they were at 81 yards and I dialed it to 81 yards and I took a shot and I barely missed them. But like I said, that was, it was a Hail Mary shot. Didn't, didn't hit them, but it came really close. My fiance was with me that night and she said the deer, the, the, the wind gusted like right at the last second and it flew right in front of her chest, missed her. But it would have killed her had there been no wind. But of course, the wind where I'm at, 85 yards from here, wind could be totally different. But like I said, I'm really going to put this single pin test, single pin sight to the test this year, this hunting season. And I mean, if I'm doing good with it, I just have to dial it. I mean, I, I love that. But like I said, the only thing that sucks is if they're over, you know, if I have my pin set at like 30 yards and they're at 40 or 50 yards, I have to really discreetly, very methodically you know move and adjust my sight which i did last year a couple times but and they didn't see me i mean you always have to make sure that they don't see you but taking the time to adjust that sight could be precious time when you have a multiple pin sight of just aiming down and adjusting your sight to that pin rather than having to adjust the whole sight to 40 or 50 yards so I'm gonna get set up here. We're, like I said, we're sitting at 30 yards. I'm gonna throw some arrows down there and see how well I can do. Uh, we'll check back with you guys. Okay, guys, uh, I've got my bow set up, target set up. I'm gonna be shooting two different arrows today uh, and seeing which one my bow likes best, especially for a hunting situation. Uh, this is the Gold Tip Hunters. Uh, it's a 340 grain arrow, just a regular little field tip on it. Uh, bought these, these are really good arrows. I've been target shooting with these for a couple years now. Uh, I think I bought them at the arrow shop for like six, seven dollars. No, I think they were like five, six dollars a piece. Uh, then I, last year I bought the Under Armour. These are Easton, uh, carbon axis six, six millimeter. They're a little bit, uh, more slender than the gold tips. Uh, these are, I'm looking for it right quick. And they're six millimeter. These are also 340. Uh, the one thing that you have to really know about your, your bow is like with your draw length and how many pounds you're shooting, it has to, you have to make sure that you have a certain amount of grain. Oh, otherwise it won't shoot right or it could destroy the arrow or your strings. So I think they said 320 to 340 is uh, recommended for my bow. I shoot a 75 pound draw. Uh, it's a 30 inch draw length, technically 29 and a half, but with an extra little uh, thing on there, I'm 30 inch draw. So uh, yeah, I'm going to shoot these two different arrows. I think I've done this test last year, but I didn't really I'm, I got Liam here today going to help me to see which one's better. I have six arrows of each, so I have over a dozen arrows for each, but or of total. So I'm going to shoot both arrows today at the target and see which ones I can group better because somehow, you know, the way these are, these are a little bit more slender. They're a little bit lighter. They may not shoot as good. A heavier arrow may shoot better. It just depends on your bow. So, I mean, that's one thing you got to kind of look for. I mean, I'm not saying not, I'm not saying not to go out and buy your favorite arrow. Uh, if you love gold tips or you like the Under Armors, you like, I can't even think of the other ones, Carbon Express, different kinds of arrows out there, whichever ones you like, you know, uh, but you got to make sure that you fine tune your bow to those arrows, uh, get your bow used to shooting those arrows. So just make sure that you're doing that. Uh, but today I'm really going to figure out which one my bow likes to shoot the best, which ones I can hit more accurately and group better. Uh, and then from then on, those will probably be the ones that I'll use for hunting season. So let's sling some arrows guys. guys. I'm ready to go. So I wanted to go over a few things too, whenever you're shooting a bow, uh, whenever you're shooting like your compound bow and stuff like that, you want to make sure whenever you're shooting, it's kind of a fluid motion. But the one big thing to make sure you're consistently hitting your target is you want to find a good anchor point. So whenever you're first getting into bow shooting and stuff like that, it'll take you a minute to find your good anchor point. Whenever that, what I mean by that is like with your draw, see I have a Surefire, uh, Truefire little release here. I also have a thumb release, but I like shooting this one, especially when it comes Sorry about that, guys. That guy on a motorcycle. They love to rev them up around here. Uh, anyway, 
uh, whenever you're pulling back, you want to find that same anchor point every time. So whenever you're drawing back, you're finding the same anchor point. Usually, and there are some like, and I don't use what uh, they call a kisser button. There, you can put a kisser button on your string here to where it'll help you find your anchor point. So what I mean by that is a little button that's on here that's meant to go back here into the corner of your mouth. Because you want that string to come back here. So when I pull back, I come back and my anchor point, I have my thumb sitting like basically on the bottom of my chin here. And then I, I have my wrist under here, you know, my release and everything. And that string is kind of making a triangle coming across here. And that's where that kisser button on here comes in where it'll pull it back where you can always, so it would help you find your anchor point a lot better that way if you ever got confused or anything like that you would always know where your anchor point is and then from then on and i'm not saying you could probably use one of those like if you've never shot a bow before and you don't know where your anchor point is it would help you find it and then after you know you get comfortable knowing where your anchor point is take that off there in the future or keep it on there whichever you don't have to uh, but there are tools like that you can put on your bows in order to help you find your anchor point when it comes to the release so i'll show you how i pull back right quick whenever i'm pulling back i see a lot of people like to go like this like this what you want to do is you want to use all of your chest muscles your arm muscles so it's kind of like one you're not just using your arm because if you're just using your arm to pull it across your chest uh then you could really hurt your arm and you make your arm a lot more tired so the one thing you want to make sure is you're using all of your muscles. And I know a lot of people are probably thinking right now, like, oh, I've watched hunting videos. And whenever they're hunting, you know, they're just pulling that back with that one hand. Actually, they're not. If you really look at it, what oh, they're yeah. doing is they're sitting here waiting. And then when they do, they're pushing with the front arm and pulling back with their back arm. And some people even still do. Uh, a lot of people, there are, there's a draw, which I've seen a lot of people do is mostly target shooters. Uh, they kind of start above and pull down because the downward motion, you know, helps a little bit. But when you're hunting, you want to move as little as possible, even when pulling your bow back. So, I mean, that's why if you can start off a little bit high and then you pull back, but when you pull back, you're pushing with that front arm. So that way you're using your whole arm and chest and back muscles to push that. And it's a more fluid and easier draw. So, I mean, you know, when I pull back, whenever I'm hunting, I sit here and I'm waiting and I see them drop their head. So I go to pull back. So I'm up, kick that arm up, push, and I'm back, you know, and I've seen people now I've seen whenever I'm target shooting, I may do this and then settle on. But the one thing that a lot of people one of the easiest things i can tell you to do if you're just starting out or even if you are just getting into archery you may be a hunter you never archery hunted you want to get into it well one thing and one easy way to get on target because when you're hunting you don't want to move as much right so best thing i can tell you to do is start a little bit high and settle over your target and bring that down to that target right so so if he's at 20 yards you know i'm gonna start here with my bow kind of tilted upwards and then i kind of draw down and when i get him to full draw my arms are going to come back and settle back down and that means your pin is going to be above the deer and then or hog or whatever you're shooting at and then it's going to settle down over it probably the easiest thing easiest way one rule of thumb that you can do uh, because it's a lot easier to do it coming down rather than having to lift up because your arms already up here so it's just going to come back down and kind of catch that weight but there's you know you've already got that weight but I mean if you haven't got the weight and you're drawing low and you're having to come up that's even more motion coming up because their head is down they can see that more so I mean coming up is a lot harder than coming down when you're settling over the target so rule of thumb if you want to do that first time get used to shooting that way at a target first you always want to practice before you go out so you know you want you hold it practice drawing like you're in a deer blind or in a tree stand or anything like that hunting situation move as little as possible 
So whenever you're shooting, you kind of just pull it back and then you settle over that target and let that pin fall right down to where you're wanting to shoot. And then you settle on it. You let it settle, take a deep breath, blow it out about halfway and hold. And then you're gonna slowly squeeze that trigger. I'll give you a little uh, demonstration right here. So whenever I'm hunting, like I said, I'm at 30 yards and I've got my sight dialed to 30 yards. So I'm gonna pull back. I'm gonna find my anchor point right back here. I'm gonna get on sight, take a deep breath, blow it out and hold. like that and you saw how when i did is i curled my finger and i didn't pull the trigger so much as i kind of just i've gotten to the point now where i can control control pulling that trigger rather than you know it because there's one good thing they call uh target panic you see a big buck and you're wanting to shoot real quick so you pull that like a gun and you pull it well you can pull your shot off so the best thing i can tell you to do is wrap that finger over that trigger and kind of just slowly pull back and when you slowly pull back, it'll automatically, the pressure will hit that trigger and automatically go off like a gun. Kind of might startle you a minute, but that's going to be a more true shot. So I'm going to go check my arrows and then I'm, I'm going to sling a few more arrows and see how my grouping is. That was with the gold tip. I'm going to shoot. No, I'm sorry. That was the, uh, the under armor. So I'm going to shoot one of my under armors again, see the grouping. Then I'm going to shoot my hunters and then I'm going to see the grouping on those and we'll touch base back with you. Okay, guys, I am a little bit off here. <laughs> These first two Under Armour arrows. Is it 30 yards? And, yeah, it's 30 yards. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's probably me pulling the trigger and I pushed the shot off a little bit. There was a cat running towards the target, so I kind of target panicked there. I didn't want to hit the cat. So I'm going to get loaded up again and shoot him again and see what happens. Right. Well, Looks like I'm gonna be using the Under Armour arrows this year, guys. I've shot probably about 40, 30 or 40 arrows today. And groupings, a little bit, well, my arms were getting tired. So, I mean, this is probably within about a, eh, maybe inch and a half, two inches. But I was grouping them together. I was pulling them a little bit, but I mean, I was grouping them together within an inch over here. Second shot on this Hunter arrow landed right around here so they're both grouping pretty good i know they're shooting to the right just a little bit but that was probably me uh pulling uh my shot a little bit so they're hitting pretty good um i think i might use either one i gotta get some lighted knocks for these under armor arrows but uh either or man i might like last year i think what i did was um i went and uh took i would take four arrows out and i took one, two of each so i may do that again this year uh but it looks like i'll be slinging those uh underarm arrows they seem to be a little bit more consistent today so um although like i said they, they are a little bit they're about the same they're the same grain arrow so they're the same weight but the the diameter of them just a little bit smaller so, I mean, that, that's the only difference really between the arrows. Uh, the knocks are a little bit different too, but I mean, they both work really good. You just got to find that one arrow that fits you. And I mean, not necessarily that. I mean, you can kind of fine tune yourself and your bow to the arrow that you want to. So, I mean, but if you ever find you a good arrow, like you're testing out arrows and you find you a good arrow that you shoot and darts with every dang time, use that arrow, man. Buy you some broadheads. Uh, like I said, I have a couple different kinds of broadheads and I'll show those to you probably in another video, probably right before we go hunting. Uh, cause I'm debating right now. I bought some, uh, some expandable broadheads, mechanical ones, uh, and they are Allen, which is like a Walmart brand. And then I also have there, all of them that I have are off brand. Cause I thought that I had, uh, ordered some name brand, the, uh, rage hypodermics but it turns out I, I didn't look at the name very well when i ordered them on amazon and they were an off brand that don't look like the rage hypodermic at all so they look more like the allens but the allens are a lot more sharp so and uh, i don't have to sharpen those as much so uh i like i said i'll get with you guys and show you those probably in another video like i said 
probably about a week we're going to go on our first hunt this season so we're probably going to come out bow hunting may not film that but we're going to come out bow shooting a few more times this week and hopefully we'll get us a big deer guys wish us luck if you like this content let me know like and subscribe let me know if you want to see anything else or know any other questions thanks guys